Hi, and welcome to Teach the Table. I'm Nathan, and this is Rococo. Spelled with C's in the English version, I have the European version with the K's there. Set in France in the mid-18th century, you're a dressmaker and a lavish ball is coming up. Your goal is to gain more prestige than your competitors by creating elegant outfits to be shown off, as well as funding the various decorations. You have cards which represent your employees, and you can play one per turn to take an action. Play continues clockwise, and when no one has any more employees in their hand, the round ends. After seven rounds, the ball will start, and final scoring will happen. The dressmaker with the most prestige points wins at that point. This is a game with multiple ways to score, and that will make more sense once I show you how to play. Rococo is played in four phases, and the first one is preparing the board for a new round. So this is a great opportunity to explain all the areas of the board. In the corner up here, we have the Queen's Favor card, and this is essentially a starting player card. So whoever has it from the previous round replaces it back up here, and they get to go first, represented by the starting player token. On the left side of the board are four employees that you can hire to add to your hand of cards. Any cards left over from a previous round will be removed and replaced from this deck. This also serves as a clock until the end of the game, as the highest number card will indicate what round you're on. And in round seven, the last four cards from this deck will be there, so you know the game's almost over. On the bottom left here is a warehouse with rows of resource tiles depicting various colors of silk, as well as white lace cubes or these gray yarn spools. And these are what you need to create dresses. We won't remove any from the previous round, so if there's any holes, we just fill them in from the supply at the beginning of a new round. The bottom of the board is the workshop with tiles showing dress patterns as well as the required resources underneath to make those dresses. These windows are filled from left to right, but the first thing that happens is any dresses that are left over from a previous round on these dark windows get removed from the game. Then you shift any remaining dresses all the way to the right, and then you're going to fill in from left to right so that all the spots are filled like so. That's the first phase, just setting up the board. But there are also five halls that you can place people in your dresses, with the King's Hall being the first one on the topmost floor. Then there's a few smaller ones here, and then a few larger ones lower down. There are also some decorations that you can fund, the fireworks up on the terrace, musicians inside each hall, as well as fountains down on the bottom and statues out front. The second phase is choosing three cards from your deck to go into your hand. The deck doesn't need to be shuffled because you can look through the entire deck and choose which three cards you want, as long as you're not looking through your discard, only your deck. If there are only one or two cards there, you'll have to take those first before you take the cards from your discard back into your deck and choose one additional from those. Your employees have different levels of skill, the master with the golden thimble, the journeyman with the silver thimble, and the apprentice with the brass thimble. Some actions can't be performed by certain skill levels, and that's depicted by their thimble icons on the boards. A journeyman cannot hire new employees, and an apprentice being a peon additionally cannot make dresses or take the queen's favor. Another thing about employee cards is that they have a space on the bottom where there may be a bonus. The bonus can't be used before you use the card for the main action, but you can always forfeit taking a main action if you want to just use the bonus by itself. Also, some of the final employees in the game have this red background on the bonus with a crown, and that indicates that this is not a bonus that takes place during the game itself, but at the end of the game, this is some final scoring bonuses. Now for the meat of the game, the actions. To take the queen's favor, you take the card, and this will let you be the starting player at the beginning of the next round. You also get five money for doing so. If you take this in the final round of the game, there's no benefit of being starting player once the game is over, so you'll get three points at the end of the game for having this. To gain a resource tile, you have to pay money, depending on how many tiles are in the row that you want to take from. See the chart there. Then when you take that tile, you have a choice to make. You can either put it face down in front of you, so you can use the silk later to build a dress, or you can take it for the bottom, which is the silk or yarn, which you get in your supply right now, and just discard this tile. To make a dress, you have to pay the required resources, as well as some money located above the window. Some tiles have a golden thimble on them, and that indicates that only a master employee can make that dress. Once you gain the dress tile, you have a decision to make. You can either sell the dress for an amount of money right now, or you can flip it over and rent it out to someone else by placing it on any spot in the hall. Some spots in the halls have golden thimbles, and that indicates that if you used a master for this action, then you can put it there. There's also bonuses on some spots that you get to take once you place an employee there. Keep in mind that you don't have to have a dress with a golden thimble to go on a spot with a golden thimble. So if a master built one of these other dresses that didn't require a master, you could still use that there since you built it with a master. 
Once you've placed a dress out in the hall, you'll put one of your property markers on there just to indicate that you own it so you can get points at the end of the game. To hire a new employee, you must pay money depending on how many cards you have to choose from. And then that card that you gain goes directly into your hand. So you'll get an additional action this round. You can also depute an employee, basically delegating your employee to go work in the king's court for you. This lets you remove your employee from the game, which makes your deck more efficient, and you gain money depending on the skill level of that employee that you're sending off. You still get to take the bonus from the employee on the bottom before you get rid of him, but you cannot depute an employee if you only have four cards in your hand, because that would leave you with only three cards total, which means you can just keep playing the same three cards over and over and over. The last action you can do is funding decorations, which will get you points at the end of the game, and they'll also get you money in the case of the fountain at the end of each round. The only limit to doing this is that each player can only have one in each row of the fountain. So you could have one up here and one down here. As you perform actions, be mindful of having at least one of your property markers in each hall. That either counts for being on a dress or being on a musician decoration. So once you've met all of those criteria, you have one in each hall, the first person to do so gets to put their little marker up there, which indicates that they get eight points at the end of the game. So the first people to do this are gonna get more points with diminishing returns. Once all players have run out of cards, that ends the action round, and players then collect income. So they're gonna get a base income of five money, and then they get additional income for the fountain, depending on if they have markers in each row. If you funded the top row of the fountain, you're gonna get one additional money for each decoration space with your property marker on it. That does include the fountain. And if you funded the bottom row, you're gonna get one additional money for each dress with your property marker on it. After everyone's received all their income, a new round starts like I showed you at the beginning. After seven rounds of this, final scoring takes place. Now this is quite a bit of point salad, so using the final scoring aid here is recommended. First, players will gain one point for each 10 money that they return to the bank. Players will keep the remainder for any tie breaking at the end. Next, score bonuses for any employees that have this red background with the crown. Like I said earlier, these points take place right now, not during the game. Additionally, if the player has the queen's favor at this point in the game, they're gonna get three additional points right now. Next players will get points for having the most dresses in each hall. So each hall is gonna score this way with the various points located in the corner there for first and second place. A tie is resolved in favor of the person who has the most master spaces in that hall. Keep in mind that in a two player game, second player is not gonna be awarded any points. So you're just gonna use the points for the first player. After scoring all the halls this way, next we're gonna score the fireworks in a similar fashion. So whoever funded the most fireworks is gonna get points accordingly. A tie in this case is broken in favor of whoever owns the most expensive space, which is furthest to the right. After scoring the majority on the fireworks, you actually have an opportunity to move one of your dresses up to a firework display if you funded one. So you get to choose which one you wanna move where, and these are going to be a multiplier of the points that the dress is worth later on in the game. Right now, you just get to move it up there first. After moving people from the King's Hall up to the terrace for the fireworks, we're gonna score these statues. For each space on the statue that you funded, you get points for having a set of dresses in different colors. So having one of each of the different colors, and that's gonna be two points for each of those colors. So a maximum of eight points for each statue that you funded. If you funded multiple statues, then you need to count different dresses to score this. And any remainder will still count. So if I had a full set of four for this one, that's eight points. And then if I just had another red and a yellow, that would just be four additional points. So you do get partial scoring on this. Finally, players will get to score points for all property markers on the board, scoring points as they remove them. Dresses on the terrace are multiplied like I explained earlier, and don't forget to count the all halls bonus as well for having presents in every hall. If there is a tie in the final score, that tie will be broken by whoever has the most leftover money. So to recap, you get points for money, for having bonuses on some cards, for having the queen's favor at the end of the game, for having property in all halls earlier than your cohorts, having a majority of dresses in each hall, having a majority of fireworks decorations funded, having a multiplier on those fireworks with a dress in the King's Hall, and finally points from the dresses and decorations as shown on the board or on their tiles. Pretty much everything in the game will get you some sort of points. And that's how you play Rococo. There is a lot going on, but it gels pretty quickly after just a few rounds. Keep the back of the rules handy because it shows all the various employee bonuses, so that'll definitely be used during the game. Thanks for watching Teach the Table, and don't forget to have fun.